Hi guys, Melissa Johnson, Independent Sensi Consultant, back with you again today. I'm Dale. I'm back with you also. Oh, why should you do that? Oh yes, I shake the table. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I went Friday to a Harry Potter festival. Well, it's called the Wizarding World of um, Kent. And it's in Kent, Ohio at Kent State University. And I, my friends, Caroline um, Johnson, um, she's a subscriber. Hi, Caroline. <laughs> and um, Jackie Anderson, um, they had asked me to go with them. And I was like, okay, like I've never done a 5K. They've done a few together. Um, and they know I, I'm super into Harry Potter now. <laughs> They've been for a long time. But um, so we had to wear this bib. Um, and it's the time has come, run that shall not be named, five and three quarter K. So we had to wear this bib, that was interesting. And I'm gonna yeah. attach a video at the end. Um, it's of the festival, you know, in the Kent, um, downtown Kent. That's really good. And then um, at the university, like the, the we, um, we mostly walked because Melissa doesn't run unless something's chasing her. <laughs> um, so we mostly like power walked, Caroline and I um around the um university so there's pictures of the university and the surrounding area and i thought it was neat because when cassie went to um the university of maine like she kind of had to go off campus to get like food other than a few places on campus but um kent state was kind of cool because they had like five guys and all you did all you had to do is like walk across the street they had like pizza places um all this stuff your tape, your leg is shaking. <laughs> and um, all this stuff. So, um, yeah, so you'll see that video at the end. It was so much fun. But um, the we got the t-shirts. Um, the time has come 2021. And the back says, um, run that shall not be named. And then here's the medal. It's actually really cool. It's, it's a time turner. I don't know if you can see it. Um, like Hermione had in the one um, episode, <laughs> episode, if you watch the movies, I guess. But I just thought it was like super cool. I've never done that before, so. Um, but then there's a bookstore and a coffee shop in there. We got butter beer and um, like green tea lattes and stuff. And I found um, the sixth Harry Potter book um, and these are like in really excellent shape. They're only 10 bucks. That's just a menu <laughs> that I have in there. Um, and one of my books that I got from eBay, the binding is broken and I couldn't remember if it was like six or seven. So I'm like, these are like pristine. So I had to get these. Um, they really are. These are excellent. And there's a plastic cover on the dust cover, which is will preserve it. Wow. I thought Beautiful. I saw like a library stamp in here. So I was just looking really quick. <laughs> Sorry, pardon me. Um, cause I thought that was strange. <laughs> and it's probably just the way I looked at it. Yeah, it was just, it's just in the book itself. Like it just looked like a library stamp real quick. So I was just checking. <laughs> but um, yeah, the Deathly Hallows is my favorite. Um, so I got three of them, like only spent like 30 bucks. I thought that was amazing. Um, at the popcorn shop, like I got some Gryffindor um, caramel popcorn at Popped out there. And you can go to shop, S-H-O-P-P-O-P-P-E-D.com um, and get that. But I ended up getting, um, it's like caramel popcorn that they make there. Got oh, that's that. really good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I brought some. <laughs> that was dumb. I ate that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain the wax melts that I got there. <laughs> so you can finish eating. <laughs> <laughs> so these are just some uh, wax melts that are that were available at the thing. They had some great names on these. This is called Elf's Sock. Um, the, this one is called, and I don't know if I'm saying this right, uh, Amortentia. Amortentia. Uh, if I'm wrong, forgive me. But And that's Dragon Smoke. And they were at Off the Wagon in Kent. They're only like $4.99. Yeah. So, 
That yeah. one's um, mm. bombshell scented, like Victoria's Secret bombshell. This one is dragon smoke and it's sandalwood and bourbon from Three Clovers Candles. It's a hand poured soy candle. Three Clover Candles at Outlook.com <laughs> if you're in order. But this one's very pretty. It's almost like herbal, or not herbal, um, like incense. Reminds me of like incense. But this is, mm -hmm. I think Caroline said this might have been a plant. <laughs> and like Miss, Miss Trim, Trim, Trimoni? Oh, why can't I remember her name? So pretty. <laughs> I like Victoria's Secret though. And they had um, a butterbeer one, but I didn't get the the wax melts when we were there, and the candle is like 18 bucks, and I didn't want to get a candle of it, so I didn't get the butterbeer, but it was really good. The elf sock is like Jamaica Me Crazy, because it's not a magical name, which I thought was really cute. And Jamaica Me Crazy is like a fruity, mm, like bananas and pineapple and yum yum. <laughs> Um, but at the popcorn shop, they also had like um, golden snitches. Um, and these are milk chocolate dipped Oreo cookies. So I had to get that. <laughs> it's only like two bucks or something like that. They made golden snitches. I just thought that was super cute. Um, and then at that same popcorn shop, which we ate some, <laughs> got some gum drops and they're super soft. <laughs> Are you trying to hold on to the golden snitch? Yes, if you catch this, <laughs> then you win. <laughs> and then at the um, at the store, the off the wagon store, they had chocolate frogs. <laughs> um, and then you get cards. Like I'll open it up and, and show you what the it's milk chocolate with crisp rice. Only like ninety calories. <laughs> so I just wanted to see the cards. You know, like when they're on the train on their way to Hogwarts and stuff, and you can always get the, oops, this one's sealed right into the package. <laughs> oh, and they're holographic too, so it's like they move. Ah, they're really cool. So they have that card of sweets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is Devlin Whitehorn. But you see how it's like holographic and it moves? Oh my gosh, that's so funny, you guys. I just thought that was the movie. That's super cute. <laughs> um, and then in that same off the wagon store, they had fun games and socks and all kinds of things. But we all know I love red hot cinnamon. And we all know I love peeps. <laughs> so I found hot tamale, fierce cinnamon, peeps, OMG. <laughs> they had me at red hot cinnamon and they had me at peeps. So. <laughs> yeah, if there's a cinnamon. peeps label on it, she's going to get it. Um, and then I also got like a, a little magnet. It's the Order of the Phoenix and it says, um, the things we lose have a way of coming back to us in the end, which reminds me of Ursula. So I got this magnet, which I thought was really cute. And then in the same store, um, I got a Phoenix feather and a necklace. It's only like six bucks. It's cute. Um, it says Phoenix, Phoenix feathers are capable of the greatest range of magic, though they may take longer than either unicorn hair or dragon heart string cores to reveal this, like they put in the wands. Um, they show the most initiative, sometimes acting of their own accord, a quality that many witches and wizards dislike. So I just thought that was really cute. And then um, I also got a little owl feather. And I think we forgot about the owl show. There was like an owl um, birds of a feather kind of show there, but um, this says a feather from an owl symbolizes wisdom, the ability to see things normally, um, a creature of the night, silent and swift. The significance of finding an owl feather symbolizes the owl is wishing to work with you on matters of spiritual growth and healing, and that so reminded me of Ursula, um, so I had to get that. I thought it was super cute. So that's all the fun stuff. I just wanted I have like another book and a, a little sticker, but they're like non Harry Potter related. So um, I just thought I would share that with you guys because I know everyone was wondering about it. So um, and we had butterbeer pancakes um, and they were huge. They're the size of like a small or medium pizza. <laughs> so we ended up splitting them. 
Um, and that was fun. It rained on us when we were trying to eat the pancakes <laughs> for like a, an hour. Um, so that was so much fun. Um, but we're going to get into the warmer of the month. I know real quick, people have requested that um, we share our story real quick, but I think it was Hannah Blazon that had asked a question um, and asked if anyone thought that the body cream and the hand cream were different. And I have always thought that they were the same texture, but I always get the, the body cream feeling like, um, just put it on the floor. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> um, because uh, I just, I always get this one thinking it's the better deal. So, um, I, um, I always just get this thinking it's the better deal and I just, I never really thought there was much difference. Um, but I didn't want to take this giant thing of it and I had a hand cream, um, in Luna 2 that I took thinking, well, that's a great travel size. And for the first time I noticed there is a difference. Like this is definitely thinner texture than the body cream. So, and I felt like it was way less hydrating. Like I felt like my skin was still kind of wanting more moisture. So I highly recommend the body cream over the hand cream, um, unless you don't like that body butter texture, that thick moisturizing texture, then go with the hand cream. But I just wanted to answer that. So um, my friend Ursula, I don't want anybody to forget what she looks like. Um, that's my friend Ursula. And she always loved like the moon and the stars and nighttime and all that stuff. So, um, the warmer the month, I had a star um, dedicated in Ursula's name when she passed away. Um, and it's in Ursa Major. And yep. um, I felt like that was the appropriate constellation because like she always thought bears were her spirit animal. Um, and so she has one in the constellation Ursa Major, which is the Big Dipper. Um, and so this warmer, I had to have it. It reminds me so much of Ursula. Um, and then I think at the end, we'll talk about our story real quick. Okay. We'll just show the warmer real quick for the people real that quick. jump on for that. And then okay. anybody who wants to stick around for the rest, we'll tell our story. So I love this warmer. Obviously, because it reminds me of Ursula, all the stars and stuff, but it's just a beautiful warmer. And I've had this here since Friday, but I had to leave, so I couldn't unbox it. <laughs> I've been dying to unbox it. Then we have, yeah, and then we have the wax and the flyer. You want to talk about that last? You want to do the warmer first? Uh, yeah, it's up to you. It's fine. So, um, it's a glass warmer, so it's going to come with styrofoam in the, the cardboard box that holds the, the dish. Um, and I was watching a, a live with Heidi and Orville, and they had mentioned that um, the reason that they put the four on the cups, well, not every cup says four, like, my, like the polar panorama, that is coming in the new catalog and you can only find it in the flip out section. It's not in the actual catalog. It's in that flip out thing in the back. Polar Panorama is in there. I highly recommend that element warmer. But the four cubes, um, I know when I first started, I used to think that meant don't put more than four, it would spill. But Heidi and Orwell actually mentioned that the reason they put that there is that's the optimal um, amount of cubes for the optimal amount of fragrance based on the warmer. Um, and I have way too many warmers. <laughs> Most people don't have eight, eight plus warmers in their house. So I only put one cube each in eight million warmers. Um, so if you only have one warmer, I would say yes, totally do that recommended amount. Um, but since I am a multiple warmer girl, <laughs> I only put one in. Um, but I just thought that was interesting. So. I will let Dale, um, I have to plug it in. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to go on and get that ready? If you want, you don't have to. It's going to let you undo everything. But, um, 
I guess if you want to get the extension cord, then okay. we can do it that way. Um, but this is a gorgeous warmer, you guys. And it does say, and be careful because your light bulb is usually wrapped up in there. Um, it does say, um, because of the mosaic on it, it does say, um, caution, this may contain sharp edges. Use caution when assembling and handling. They just do that precautionary wise. Um, so just watch out because sometimes with the mosaic ones or the crushed diamond and even sometimes the glitter ones can be a little pokey. Um, but they're all like handmade and stuff like that. So um, that's the fun part. Each one will be slightly different. Um, and they do say, I think it's right on this. Um, marks on the tile are, nor are the normal part of the handmade process. Um, so each one will have different, like, uh, like there's like little scratches on the stars, some of the stars. Um, they just want you to know that that is normal. Don't send it back. Um, it's not supposed to be perfect because these are hand, individually handmade. But do you see that amazing like opalescence to the stars? I absolutely love it. So each of the stars has that opalescent look to it. Oh man, that's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So it reminds me of the star that we had named in, in her um, honor. <laughs> um, but so that you could look up at the stars and always feel like, hey, you know, we are still looking at that same star we are. <laughs> but like, you know, like they'll have like little, little scratches and some of them might be a little covered up with, um, you know, like the, the plaster, like this one sticks out slightly. So it's a little pokier than some of the others. Um, so just keep that in mind. Dale, just sit down. Don't worry about the dog. <laughs> Except she's going to be a little yeah. She's blind and doesn't know where she's going. Okay, well, we'll be right with you. Hold tight. <laughs> so. She needs she's help. Talking. She's like me. She needs help. Um, so you just, when you get your light bulb, just put that in. Pardon her coughing. She gets excited. <laughs> Okay, so, and that notch just helps it um, sit so that it doesn't wobble. Um, so, and I'm gonna just put the dish on there and we're gonna light it up. Do you wanna, you can yeah, hold it if you want. It, yeah. And that's what it looks like lit up. Wow, isn't that something? And you can definitely see how it's not like in the studio perfect, but that's what I love is like the artistic quality, like that someone sat and like pieced that all together and did the, the, um, the, not cement, but like the plaster. Yeah, yeah, the plaster on it. So for the mosaic. Hand placed glass accents shine in stellar display that is mesmerizing as the real thing. And you notice as I turn this, at least from what I can see on the camera angle, it like flashes a little bit. That's because on your walls and everything, it'll show some stars. It'll show a lighting, uh, which is just pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know if we have anything that will display that. Not perfectly, but it helps. Yeah. Um. No, there you go. See the stars that are right on the white it's, sheet? It's not really stars. It's, it, I mean, it's not perfect, but right. um, it's going to cast like a glow. Now, I personally, that's too bright for my bedroom, but maybe a kid's room that they don't like it to be um, fully dark. That still might be kind of bright, but we have some colored bulbs to put in it to show you. Now, <laughs> um, my monthly club that um, charges on the 8th of the month, um, actually shipped out and won't be here till tomorrow. <laughs> so normally that arrives before, before this one, 
Um, so I was hoping to have all the color colored lights, but they won't come till tomorrow. So I can always attach a video um, just showing you the blue and the green. No, wait, I have blue. Wait, I have blue, purple, and red. I just don't have green and orange. So I can show those separately. Um, blue and purple are kind of my favorite anyway. <laughs> um, but I'll show you also what the orange and the green look like. Now the red, you could think, I don't know, it depends on your kid's favorite color. Like I think the colored bulbs are more fun for like the kids' rooms mm -hmm. or holidays. So this could be like Valentine's and oh, Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Um, or matching your decor or something. Or just to do something different. <laughs> so this will be the red, which I think is fun. Yeah, it is. Or 4th of July, that would be a great 4th oh, yeah. of July. Yep, especially with the stars. So you could do all your decor like based around that. So I think red is great. Mm -hmm. Dale's like, I don't want to touch the hot. Oh, well, they're not that hot if you don't have them on too long. <laughs> the first one, though. <laughs> it was on longer. <laughs> yeah. um, so, and I don't know, again, if these perform quite as well. I, I mean, they're 25 watts still, so they should. Um, but I think these are more like room friendly, <laughs> especially the blue and the purple because they're darker. Um, I, the blue is my personal favorite, but I really like the purple. <laughs> so blue is also another great 4th of July, maybe Christmas if your theme is like blue and white. Um, kitchen, like my kitchen just got red. <laughs> so. I oh, love the blue. That's beautiful. But especially for like a kid's room. I don't feel like that's nearly as bright. No, it's not. That would be perfect for a nightlight. I think it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Love, 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 love blue. <laughs> so. But purple is really um, like bedroom friendly because <laughs> it's almost, almost black. And I know like Heidi and Orville on their um, live one time and said that they tried really hard to do pink, like a hot pink, but, or, you know, like for the cancer kind of warmers and stuff or like October, but just quality, there was just quality control issues. Like they just have this really difficult time getting pink um, and having it meet their quality standards. So they just, they haven't been able to launch pink. So, um, I'm sure that they're still trying because I know that they get a lot of requests for that. So hang tight, you know, hopefully one of these days um, they can. Go ahead. <laughs> that's purple. Now that's super bedroom friendly. Like I would mm -hmm. even, the blue would match our room more, but um, I would that even, so I would totally put that one in my room because that's nice and deep. It's a real uh, soft color. It's like mm. scentsy purple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm. I love purple. I think purple's gorgeous. Ursula loves purple too, so that kind of reminds me of her. I don't know, I might keep purple in it. Really instead of the, one. yeah, instead of the clear one. Okay. Um, until tomorrow, until I get the, the green. Green is brighter. <laughs> um, St. Patrick's Day, Christmas. No dog, there's nothing for you. <laughs> I think she thinks that we're eating because we're at the table. Um, so Dale's gonna go over the the fragrance. Just let her go. Make a path there. Let her go. I do it all the time. Um, so go ahead and go over the fragrance. Okay. So the uh, what is the name of this? Vanilla blackberry. Vanilla blackberry. Wow. And so the warmer is called night sky, by the way. Night sky. And uh, the vanilla blackberry, the top notes are bergamot. Sorry. Is that right? Bergam is it bergamot? Bergamot. Um, okay, bergamot. A, a name I didn't know. R and red berries. The mid notes, pink jasmine, green gauge plum. Now that's something I'm not familiar with, so I guess I'll give it. And then the base notes are amber, musk, vanilla, and cedar. Always a great combination of things. So 
One more time, top notes are bergamot, red berries, mid notes, pink jasmine, green page plum, or green gauge, I'm sorry, green gauge plum. And then the base notes are amber, musk, vanilla, and cedar. I, when, as a consultant, you get nine wax bars, he's got one. <laughs> and you get a room spray and um, a tester in the scent of the month. Um, along with 72 stickers and 50 flyers. That's part of that. I, I as a consultant, I love getting this. Um, and so like, I like to make samples for my customers, send those out, um, like every three months. Um, if you've ordered in the past three months, sometimes people, when they don't get it the following month, they're like, oh, and they, they order. Um, even if something small, just to be back on the list for getting a sample. So um, I find that, that they really enjoy that. So they'll, they'll they can sometimes take it for granted if you just do it. So, um, you know, every three months get one, you know, that's kind of an incentive to, to keep ordering. Um, I absolutely love the packaging, you guys. That's gorgeous packaging. Wow. Spectacular. Um, you know what this reminds me of? We, I have many, we don't have to share. Well, we don't have to share, do we? Although, um, although we're good at sharing. <laughs> Do you guys remember, and I feel like I'm dating myself because I feel like they don't make it anymore and I don't know if they do or not. Clearly Canadian. It was like a uh, flavored water. Hmm. Do you remember? It was a sparkling flavored water. Oh I'm my done. gosh. I must have skipped those years. <laughs> on our senior trip, like we bought some when we went on our senior trip to um, Myrtle Beach and there's only 10 of us in my graduating class because I went to Christian school. And the blackberry flavored, clearly Canadian. I had a feeling mm -hmm. this would remind me of it. I remember something, yeah. Blackberry, I know like, I know even black raspberry vanilla, and it's not the same. Um, tends to, Any blackberry tends to come off with like a perfume. Of course, that's black raspberry um, vanilla, and this one's vanilla blackberry. Mm -hmm. But the blackberry, clearly Canadian, also oh, has. This is nice. Like a perfume. I like this one. Type scent. I had a feeling you would. Yeah, this is really nice. I do like in the in the description for the scent, it says bold fruity blackberry draws you in with an amber and vanilla finish. I feel like you get the the almost body care perfume blackberry, which is very deep, deep berry, rich, deep berry. I missed my cue. I was supposed to read that. No, she's reading it. But I also Skip. feel like yeah. I get the amber and the yeah. cedar wood that's the bottom note. Yeah. I feel like I pick up cedar. And the musk, I would say. Amber, vanilla, cedar, musk. Like, I smell the deep base notes. Mm -hmm. More than I smell the bergamot, the red berries, the jasmine, the On both plum. sides? Because I think I smell those deep notes on the bottom side. Yeah. You know, which I think is probably what the design is, so that as it melts the wax bars are indented with the the scent categories yeah, <laughs> so cool it's pretty cool i guess i'm smelling mostly the bottom yeah i just think that as this as this melts you're going to have a real pronounced um fragrance it's going to come I, it's I, I like it a lot. i love it it's totally mm -hmm. different it's similar but totally different to um black raspberry vanilla so don't think oh this is just like black raspberry vanilla because it's not like that's black raspberry and this is like blackberry vanilla blackberry um i actually think that'd be fun in the bedroom it's very like a winter i definitely think it's more fall winter because mm -hmm. it's yeah, so I rich think so, yeah good timing right um now i've heard people compare this to Monstropolis, I definitely think Monstropolis was like lemon raspberry. I don't think this is similar enough to Monstropolis mm. for me personally, because I'm totally picking up the, but I like to take my wax bars out and hold them and smell them. <laughs> so I totally on the bottom and, and that's what I like to smell the most. I'm totally picking up the really deep, rich cedar, musk, amber, and I don't think Monstropolis is anything like that, like Monstropolis is totally bright, berry and raspberry, like lemon raspberry. This is way deeper, cedar, vanilla, amber, sexy, perfume. Mm. Like that's, 
That's deep, rich. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's a really beautiful aroma. It really is. Great scent. Oh, yeah. Great scent from Scentsy. Now, that's just my personal opinion. Um, I don't get Monstropolis, though. Like, don't take Monstropolis out of your club to get this, because I feel like you'll be disappointed. This is re this is richer, deeper. Mm. Uh, Monstropolis is bright, fruity. Definitely lemon raspberry on the Monstropolis. This is black, berry, cedar, vanilla, musk, mm -hmm. amber, plum. Very much so. That's beautiful. And because these are Sexy. <laughs> item items of the month, whether it's the warmer, the or the uh, this is all the scent of the month. Okay, vanilla blackberry. So the Scentsy bar is on sale. These things are all on sale. So the Scentsy bar, which is normally six dollars, is five dollars and forty cents. The room spray, which is the best product. Well, it's it's equal with. At the uh, the counter cleaner. Yeah, I, I love the counter cleaner, but I love this. This is fantastic. Fun and counter clean. The regular eight dollars is seven dollars and twenty cents. Yay! And then the scent circle, which looks like this. Yeah, is it? yeah right there. Okay, so that is normally three dollars. It's two dollars and seventy cents. And then, so you get a discount on these. These are the items of the month. So the warmer of the month itself, uh, you know, again, a mosaic of hand-placed glass accents shines in a stellar display that as uh, that's as memorizing as the real mesmerizing. thing. Uh, memorizing or mesmerizing? Mesmerizing. Did I say memorizing? Oh, if I did, we could memorize that. But we're not going to do that. We're going to mesmerize it. Opal essence still. Oh my word. That's fantastic. This is, you'll hear in a little bit why I think this is, this is one of my favorite warmers. I love the way this looks. I love what it does. I love what it represents for Melissa as well. It does for me. I've, I've known, uh, I knew Ursula for a long time as well. And, uh, but this is on sale right now, this warmer. It'd she be $60. It's $54. She, if she had seen this with the purple bulb, she totally would have oh, bought it. Yeah, she would have bought it. Yeah, yeah this, absolutely. Yeah, she yep. would have bought this. Yep. No doubt. But now she has the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I did look how these match. That's spectacular. <laughs> Melt your purple wax in your purple warmer. Yeah, look at the color of this wax. It's like a lovely, like grape purple. <laughs> Oh my word, that's like grape, like no, taffy when you want yeah, to eat it. Absolutely, no, I wouldn't <laughs> do that, but. Um, <laughs> so that's the scent warmer of the month. Um, I'm in love, had to have it. I keep having to have them. <laughs> um, so here any day now we should hear about, oh, um, wait, really quick before we get into our story. Oh, look, you guys, the lotion I was talking about kind of matches too. Ah! got the moon and the, the sun and stars so body cream is better <laughs> so pretty sure it was Hannah Blaze on I agree with you <laughs> but Monday um starts bring back my bar voting um and I just want to read about it really quick I know we just got done with the bring back my bars but these won't be available until last year it was just yeah on December so we're just voting on them now and we'll hear about them, you know, which ones make it. But um, it starts at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and we're Eastern, so that's 12. That's noon Monday, um, July 26th, and ends at midnight, well, 11.59, almost midnight, one minute to midnight on Pacific Standard Time, which is 12, one, 3 a.m., yeah. 2.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday the 30th. Um, you can go to my website to vote, your consultant's website to vote. Um, and during our fall winter 2021 voting period, you and your customers can vote which retired fragrances make a comeback. The top 200 fragrances discounted before December 2020 um, are eligible to be selected. The 25 Scentsy bars that receive the most votes will be brought back in January 2020, 
too, along with 10 Scentsy Club exclusive bars available solely for subscribers. So if you don't have a Scentsy Club, put one bar wax in it. At least one bar wax and you too can be a part of this exclusive 10 bar because you have to absolutely have to be a Scentsy Club subscriber to be eligible for these additional 10 bars. Um, there is no limit, unlike last time, there's no limit to the number of votes you can cast, but you can only cast one vote once um, every five minutes. Um, so five minutes, go back in and vote again, as many times as you want every five minutes, um, once. And the period will end on the 30th, so make sure your customers get their picks in on time. Winners will be announced um, at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, noon on August 12th, noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, Sensi Club Always Get My Bar Perk is the perfect way for your customers conti to continue receiving their favorite Bring Back My Bar fragrances, but this year we're sweetening the deal. Besides the 25 winning bars, Scentsy Club subscribers will have access to 10 additional bars, which can be added directly to their subscription. These bars will only be available through Scentsy Club and cannot be purchased through the website. Um, the 10 bars will be chosen from the most popular runner-up picks from around the world. Not just the U.S., because I'm in Region 1, um, U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Not just Region 1, but including Australia, New Zealand, Europe, which um, is England, yep. Netherlands, Germany. Can you name all of this? No, it's Europe. not all of Europe, though. No. It's only certain ones. I think it's just Germany, Netherlands and England, hmm. pretty sure. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so like where like the top 10 fragrant, the top 10 most popular runner ups from around the world. That means scents that we can't get our hands on here in region one from region two Europe or region three, which is Australia, New Zealand. <gasps> oh my gosh, <laughs> goosebumps. Mm -hmm. I have goosebumps. <laughs> Um, it's an exciting time for Scentsy fans, new and old, you'll find from, oh, promotional, blah, blah, blah. Um, now with the addition of the Scentsy Club exclusive bars, it's even more likely that your favorites will be brought back. Be sure to point this out to your customers when voting starts on the 26th. So, just put one bar of wax in a Scentsy Club. <laughs> Cotton cleanups for six bucks or bar wax for six bucks. Even a scent circle for three dollars. Mm -hmm. Get in a Scentsy Club so that you can have your hands on the exclusive 10 bar exclusives from around the world. <gasps> I'm so excited. So um, that happens on Monday at noon. Um, and then... Also, we have um, Aladdin, the genie's coming back. Um, he comes out at 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. Pacific Today? Standard Time. Or yesterday. Right? No, Monday. Oh, Monday, okay. Right. I was looking at the wrong dates. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so 12.30 to 1.30 on Monday. Mm -hmm. No queuing will take place. Um... So we've got the the Aladdin Buddy and the and the scent pack um, for forty five U S dollars. Um, we've got the Scentsy Bar of Wax and the scent pack. The scent pack is seven fifty, and the Bar of Wax called Three Wishes is six fifty. Um, it doesn't look like that's a pre order. That looks like that is the actual Buddy. Now, I wasn't around when he was out, so that's exciting. Um, so, one second. I am going to find him super quick. Maybe it hasn't updated. Um, back to the website we go. Hold on. <laughs> Here we 
be some perfume. So I'll show you pictures. Okay, now this is Aladdin um, and this is the genie. I absolutely love Robin Williams in this booty. <laughs> so I kind of want him, but if you look at his, um, his little, oops, oh my goodness. What happened there? If you look at his bottle, it has a zipper on it so you can put the scent pack in the, his genie bottle. <laughs> um, or you can also put the scent pack in his back if you prefer, if you don't want to put anything in his um, bottle. Or um, I think it would be a fun idea if kids like wrote on a piece of paper or something, you know, like mm -hmm some wishes or you know like if you're playing with your kids and they're like make three wishes and so you could write them on a piece of paper and put them in his genie bottle mm -hmm. like i think it's fun that they made a zipper on that um he even has his mr clean earring look at that <laughs> i like mr clean <laughs> he's a cutie <laughs> um and i want to explain oops what did i do there a few more I don't want to show up when you guys show me yet. Okay, so three wishes. There's a picture of the wax bar that's coming out. And I totally can't wait to get my hands on that. And that is described. I'll let Dale tell you. Three wishes Scentsy Bar. Big, bold notes of juicy blueberry, sugared plums, and ripe blackberry burst over sparkling cranberry for a fragrance with phenomenal cosmic powers. And I think that... Um, three wishes would be awesome with vanilla blackberry too. <laughs> you got the blueberry, the blackberry I'll notes, tell you, and the blueberries plum. attractive to me. <laughs> I like blueberries. Me too. <laughs> so that's the fun stuff coming out on Monday. Don't forget to vote on Bring Back My Bar. Um, if you're interested in Aladdin, I know I'm going for the wax bars. <laughs> um, get your hands on that. Um, and don't forget about the amazing scent and warmer of the month. <laughs> She's queuing. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Don't forget. Um, and it comes with a white bulb, by the way, just because I left the purple one in there. <laughs> um, but a lot of people have asked like us to share our story. Um, so um, like how we met and stuff. So <laughs> Dale has a hole in his lip. I guess. Um, so my mom... Um, obviously there's an age difference. Yeah, I, there is an age difference between us. I, as Ronald Reagan said, I try not to hold her youth and inexperience against her. But no, I'm just... <laughs> At least y'all get his humor. But, um, oh boy. anyway, so, um, my mom was best friends with, um, your wife that passed away yeah. long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. Um, I was still a kid. <laughs> um back then yeah but um yeah so my mom was best friends with her so I was actually at your ordination like when he became a pastor like I think that's the first day we went to church it happened to be it happened to be his ordination November 2nd 1980 so I can actually pinpoint it because <laughs> it's the anniversary of my ordination and I remember being there it was like in a big mm -hmm. red church or a big red barn that was used as a square dance barn. Square and it's the only one in town that's that's <laughs> ever been like that. So. so I wasn't born in a barn, but I was ordained in a barn. So, um, yeah, so I've known him forever. Um, like his kids went to my school. So like I grew up with your kids and like spent the night at your house, like just as a kid, obviously. Um, so and like, before you go freaking out, and think <laughs> this whole thing is weird. It's it is really, slightly it's not. If, you, if you think it, it, about but it. But if you look at it that way, I mean, she, it, she it was just a, she was a little kid, you know. Yeah. So like, I've known her. Uh, what, how old did we figure you were then in 1980? I was born in 74. Yeah, so you're six years old. 
Yeah. So I've known you since you were six. Well, I mean, <laughs> known you in the sense that I knew who you were. And you were young, though. I was young. I was 21 years old yeah. when I was... I mean, there's 19 years between us. Let's spell it out, okay? There's 19 years between us. And uh, I don't feel that age difference at all. You know, when people say age is just a number, well... Yeah, it's a number that the older you get, you recognize that the number is helpful because you get benefits and things <laughs> for being older. But He used to retire before I do. <laughs> but the other side of that coin is that you're as old as you want to be. I mean, if you want to stay young, and I've really tried to do that, and not every day. I mean, I have my moments, but... Where he naps a lot, or he's cold. <laughs> and I'm like... <sighs> I really nap a lot. <laughs> That's our only age difference. I, I get awakened by someone... Like, if I try to take a nap. You're sleeping your so, life away. Yeah. <laughs> like you sleep but when you're gone. It's all good. I, I guess the thing that I would say about all that, I didn't I, I didn't really get to know you. Then, you know, there was school. Knew you a little better. You were friends I mean, with my, my daughter and, and my church. son. And your mom attended different churches and and, uh, and at different times and, and, and would visit churches that I was the pastor at or that I was speaking at, that kind of thing. I knew, knew your parents um, as a result of that. Um, not just your mom, but your mom and dad were both there together. So, yeah. And mm -hmm. to, to tell you my background, yes, he's a pastor. You've been a pastor since you were 21. I grew up my, on my father's side, my birth father, um, my great grandparents were both in the ministry. They were both yeah. pastors, missionaries. Evangelists. Yeah. 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 Um, on my mom's side, my grandpa was a pastor. Um, and my uncle is a pastor and my two cousins are pastors, mm -hmm. um, youth pastors and stuff. And so like, I've, o I've always grown up with like pastors well, around and pastors her, and, and her family, that her mother's side of the family, which were all, they were all in the same denomination. And I knew her grandfather because we were in the same denomination at that time. And so I, I knew much, I knew background. much of her. Huh? Well, and people have asked mm -hmm. too, like his pastor background. Um, so you can tell them that because people yeah, are curious, like if I, I know, on I, your YouTube channel. I was raised, you know, and that's we'll get to the, my YouTube channel here coming <laughs> up before long. But uh, I was raised uh, in the Lutheran Church in America, so I was raised at a Lutheran church, and that's where I became uh, a follower of Christ. I was in the. I had a pastor who was a, a amazing man who was a great teacher, but a great friend as the years went by, and he sponsored me up through. And uh, and then from that background, because of some theological differences between them and me, uh, so to speak, I branched out and went into more of a non-denominational kind of feel. I was, uh, I was a product of some of you may remember this, some of you won't remember it, it doesn't really matter to me, but I was the product of the Jesus movement, okay, which was happening when all the hippies were out at Haight-Ashbury. Now, my last name is H-A-I-G-H-T. I don't own the street out there, so, but it was Haight-Ashbury, it was spelled just like my name, and the hippies were all out there and the experimental drugs and stuff. Back in those days, I was a rock and roller. I didn't have any relationship with God. I just, I believed in him, but I didn't really do anything. But I traveled with bands. I was a guitarist and singer and and fronted a couple of different bands over the years and toured. I did that kind of thing. When I came into this, uh, uh, Melissa mentioned my first wife, she was she was very ill with systemic lupus erythematosus and I bargained with God for her life. Now you're not supposed to do that, but she was about to die. And uh, she had spinal meningitis. Uh, it, it was a viral type. It was very, very, very bad. And they'd called the whole family in and she was very young at the time. And, uh, but she didn't die. And my deal with God was that I would respond to his call on my life uh, directly uh, if he saved her life. Well, wasn't you know? that before even I was born? Yeah, well, no, probably right after because she had both Tracy and Jamie at the time. Oh, okay. had, so it would have been after you were born. But but in any event, her name was Debbie and she and she had lupus and she had systemic lupus erythematosus, the worst forms. And in those days, she was one of the first diagnosed cases in the nation. And she was kind of a study sample for doctors out of the University of Pittsburgh who would come and interview her and talk with her and try to find out where lupus comes from, they never have been able to discover that. 
but and the various experimental treatments and so forth but it ended up involving her it's it's an autoimmune disorder where if you get a kidney infection the the uh, your immune system attacks the kidneys or if you have a, a problem the central nervous system if the disease gets there then it starts to attack it and that comes out the kidneys come out obviously in failed kidneys heart failed heart you know, and heart disease, um, and the, all of the major organs can be involved. That's why it's called systemic. It's a part of the system, and it goes throughout the body. And she had kidney involvement, lost her. The use of her kidneys was on dialysis, and then had a kidney transplant that lasted about six years, and then she was back on dialysis. She had central nervous system involvement. She had grand mal seizures. And, and in fact, we lost a daughter, um, who coincidentally his name is Melissa, not Melissa, but Melissa, and uh, and she died at birth, and uh, and that started a lot of the the ball rolling. And it's a much longer story that maybe I'll share at another time. But I mean, you um, were in the hospital like how long? Like well, at the University of Pittsburgh, at Presbyterian University Hospital, in 1970, it was 1978. Yes, 1978, spent uh, spent 10 months in the hospital there uh, with this. And I was back and forth from where we lived uh, almost three hours to the hospital in downtown Pittsburgh in, at the University of Pittsburgh and back and forth, back and forth. I was at the hospital so much that the chaplains at the hospital, <laughs> and by that time I was studying for ministry and I was responding to the call, and was a student at the time, and the pastoral staff at the hospital actually put me on their volunteer staff so I could visit people uh, that didn't have family members coming to visit them in the hospital. It's because I was there every day, and, uh, and still driving back home almost every day to work a night shift job to support uh, the kids and so forth. Well, anyways, long story short, she was 33 years old, when she passed away and she passed on her own birthday and uh, 33 years of age, um, leaving behind uh, the te our teenage kids and so forth. And uh, so that's, that's just a little piece of that history. But my response to the ministry happened during that time. And one of the denominations I worked with, excuse me, that I worked with for a little while was the Assemblies of God. And they that's and her favorite. family was all, they were Assemblies of God ministers. And Pentecostal. So, yeah, <laughs> that was the background. Yeah, that was the background. I'm, I don't consider myself to be in that Me vein either. today. We're not, I'm, I, in fact, I have a hard time at times calling myself a Christian because I, I, I have a doctorate in, in theology. I have a master's in biblical literature. I know what words mean. And when Christians, when followers of Jesus were first called Christian, I'm moving over to my channel now. He's preaching. They were actually, uh, that was an insult. That was not a positive name that was given to them. Uh, it means little Christs. And when Paul and others were made fun of because of following Christ, that's what they were called. Now, I consider myself more because we, we have a lot of confusion in our Western culture where we think going to church makes you a Christian. It doesn't. Uh, but... Doesn't hurt. <laughs> it doesn't hurt anything. I'm not saying it should help your our walk, but but my I'm, I truly consider myself a follower of Christ in every way. I had I have a personal relationship with Him, and but I am also very aware of the fact that there's a world around me that's that that needs Him. So anyway, but back to back <laughs> to back to the ranch. Um, reel that in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, so we. Like, I'd gone through, like, an emotionally abusive relationship, whatever. Um, so, like, I was divorced and stuff. And then we had ended up just talking. Like, ton, like I actually fell in love with his voice, which is funny because we spent a lot of time just talking. And it was general conversation. But we ended up realizing, like, how much we have in common. Like, um, whether it's, you know, our background um, with, like, pastor By stuff. By the way, we're, or, we're adults at this time. Okay, yeah, she's... I'm, like, 33. <laughs> he's, like, 54. Like, <laughs> so I have kids. Like, I have a 13-year-old and a 5-year-old. So when we got together, Eric was 5, and he's now 18, and Cassie was 13. She's now 25. School, yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, we're definitely adults. <laughs> it was stuck creepy or weird. It wasn't weird. No. 
No. So um, it just, there's a comfort level of knowing him forever. And then if you've been like in an abusive relationship and then you kind of, you, I mean, it's not, it wasn't intentional, but I guess you kind of go, well, this person's like comforting and you know, like, I don't know. So you just, but we had so much in common. Like we both, like when I was four, I felt led to be a missionary to Africa. He's been a missionary to, Af missionary to Africa. He's taught like a lot of like, um, pastor schools yeah yeah i spent a lot of time in east africa uganda and kenya he's traveled way more than all I have. over the, I've been all to over canada. the world really. but, <laughs> but my favorite place on the planet is Go is kenya, kenya and, and uganda they're both I love kenya. oh we have friends like from africa like amazing people yeah, really good friends yeah um, Past pastors and one is actually the the leader of one of the largest uh denominations in all of africa and he's a good friend yeah and I'm and like and really wanting to like go help with like the orphanage mm -hmm. <laughs> that like um, a mutual friend they have an orphanage there in Kenya. So, um, but we have like a lot of friends. And Cassie's been to South Africa like mm -hmm. in a in a cheetah reserve. Like of course that was after when we were together. But mm -hmm. so we spent a lot of time in conversation. And I I may seem very childlike and ditzy because <laughs> I drop things a lot. I'm telling you guys, I'm super deep. <laughs> I love deep, deep, deep thought conversations, sometimes even more than you're prepared for, and you're like, I need to mull this over. <laughs> so that's just how we started, you know, connecting, and then you realize everything you have in common, whether it's music or, because I love Vietnam era music, he used to play that kind of music, like, and so, like, he's impressed, like, if, we hear a song and I go, the Beatles sang that. Well, everybody knows Beatles, but um, like, I don't know, the CCR, Animals or you know, stuff Queen's Clear, yeah. Clearwater Revival or, you know, like even. We have fun. Yeah. So. I guess that's, and that's the one thing I want to say about what we, we, we bring together. And we have, a, there's a lot more history involved in this and, and some of it is not in worthy of sharing but god is good and he takes care of us and uh, and he always will but uh, not here to push our our religious views or faith on anybody because if you really knew our religious views and faith then you'd probably say oh yeah that's a lot <laughs> like what i feel uh because we are very uh we're quite different from most uh, most other pastors and and "Quote unquote Christian couples in so many respects, but here's why. I'm going to show you this one more time. I'm going to show you this warmer. This is not a sales thing. This is this is just a warmer. So one of the very first things that Melissa said to you, read to you from the literature concerning this warmer. You can turn that out. Oh. You might be able to see this a little bit better. But it has to do with the flaws. Okay, they're not really flaws." Everything has been individually crafted. Every aspect of it has been individually crafted. The Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are individually crafted by God. And, and I, I do believe that you can be brought together or you can get together and God can still bless it if you have the right heart. But I just want you to know that we are simply imperfect people handcrafted uh and we're here to serve you we're here to to walk with you um and i think that's when you ask him biblical questions he can't help himself he just kind of goes into preacher yeah. i mean that's why i spent the time traveling all over the world really much of that time was spent actually teaching pastors who didn't have any formal education or any way to do it in the third world and uh, then going over there and helping to establish uh, schools of ministry in, in southern Mexico, Guatemala, uh, East Africa, that, that was really my passion. That was my heart to do that. Yeah. But back to why we, you know, like our hard getting together, it's just, you know, like we just, you know, it was in-depth conversation and we just, all the stuff we yeah, had was. in common. And one of the things that I fell in love with with Dale is like, he's just, um, kind, compassionate, like, one of the things that I absolutely loved was with my kids, like especially Eric, who's five at the time, like he just talks to him. Like he's not about yelling, all of that stuff. Like he just talks to him he's, like he's a little person. And that's super cool. 
Um, and then like, you know, if I like hint, you know, oh my gosh, I got this, this, and this to do. I gotta go do dishes. I gotta do laundry, which he's laundry. He's a little afraid of because some of my clothes you can't dry. You can't, you gotta wash them special, blah, blah, blah. So he's like, yeah, that's you. But like, he'll do, he'll clean toilets. He'll vacuum the living room, you know, like he'll let the dog out or, you know, he does dishes. I love I love cooking. I love he preparing meals. I, I would never do it for a living because it would wreck it. I absolutely <laughs> love doing this, you know, uh, preparing meals. Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. But the kids are just like my own. I mean, Cassie's just like, you know, both Cassie and Eric, but Tracy and Jamie, my two children. And, uh, and along the way, I raised other, you know, stepkids. I, I just, I don't, the word step is a weird thing to me. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I I can always respect the other parent, you know, that's involved and, and, and respect that relationship. But if you were to meet Cassie, and you might think you have just because <laughs> Melissa talks about her so much and shares so much I'm about the kids. I'm going to make a video sometime. But if you were to talk with her or her and me together, you me. would you would believe that she's my daughter because she's just like my daughter, Tracy, you know, they're just, a, and, and Cassie's very much like her mother. So if you've met her mother, you've met her. Uh, but it's an honor and a privilege that I have been given to be able to raise kids, raise these kids and, and walk with them, especially through college with Cassie, right down my alley. I mean, yeah, that's I'm my... My dream my job has always job. been, you know, being a professor, like, you know, and teaching at the college level. I just, that's my passion. Yeah. Um, but, like, the ways that, like, I'm deficient, like, those are his accept, ex, accelerate, accelerating qualities. So, I like... I excel at places. That, is that what you're saying? Well, you wouldn't mm -hmm. know it from the videos, but in real life, I'm actually pretty quiet. And, like, I don't like to talk, especially with people I don't it's know. very shy. You don't have any idea. I don't know why on camera and I'm with this company. I'm with you. Whoa. Just, she got... <laughs> boop. Yeah, that was he's, her thing. He's diverting. He's doing the pastor bunny trail. But, um, so, like... <laughs> but, but, the... Um, I don't like to talk that much. I'm not very talkative. So he likes to talk. So like, you know, he's the talker when we get together with people and I feel less awkward because I can never think of things to talk about. And he's always just chatting to the stranger next to us. And I'm like, like, good on you. Cause I couldn't do that. <laughs> Once so. she warms up in the conversation though, she's just fine. And but he, he he'll ride the roller coasters with Cassie, which there's no way I would ever do that. Like no way. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. He likes to fly. I'm terrified. <laughs> like so, we complete each other in those ways. Like the things that I'm, you know. So it's it's just interesting, like how we kind of connect and like he makes up for my deficiencies and. I don't know that I make up for yours necessarily, but I provoke deep thought and he likes that a lot. I think you do. I think you do. I mean, uh, as with all of you, life has its challenges. It has its moments, or maybe you've taken some wrong turns here or there. I mean, uh, that's what happens sometimes. Then you take the right turns, the correct turns. The, the beauty of relationship is that if it's a good relationship, then you are able to you know, you meet each other in relationship. I've had a lot of weddings over, you know, the years since November 2nd, 1980. But uh, those relationships, the relationships uh, are, it's really about dying to yourself and living for someone else. And that's a lot easier said than done. It really is, but. He's just always been like a caretaker, like whether it's family or, you know, like in a pastor role or a counselor role, like you know it's just that's what he's it's like you were born to take care of people so it's like that's i don't know like he's just a very caretaker servant minded person that you know if i'm like dale would you help me like he's like yeah like you know it just he doesn't think anything of it i want to smell this back you pick up a bar of wax and you you want to smell it <laughs> so but yeah like and so He's the musician. He's the one. He's the speaker. That's he doesn't get. I'm terrified music. to speak in front of mm -hmm. like more than two, three people. <laughs> except, <laughs> terrified. Except, heart pounding. except on the show. It's a video. And like the, I can talk to can, my phone. Like yeah, it's just the two can, of us. She can me. talk to you know hundreds or thousands of people and not even know she is. And I and I 
so that builds up. I do want to clarify one thing. We, we don't pastor a church no. congregation right now. I'm a pastor really to the community. The uh, most of my ministry is in the ministry part of my life is to people that have no connection, no church, don't don't want anything to do with it, or are in between things. And that's but what we're do. not baby. Well, I hate to say it that way. We're, yeah, not, no, new we're not new to faith, so we don't need someone to keep because. I grew up in like tater tot, like my grandpa was a preacher and I spent a ton of time with my grandparents. So between that Christian school, you know, attend, my mom loved attending church <laughs> my whole like life until I was on my own with church. And then I was just kind of like, oh, I have to go to church every Sunday. It's not that I didn't like, you know, I, I just, I don't need church because I can read the Bible and we can have conversations and and, you know. you can, and, and relationships are what the <laughs> gathering is about. I call it the gathering because the church is really everybody all over the world that that follows Christ. So, but but the relationships that can come from those times of fellowship are essential and they're important and they're spoken of in the scriptures that we are to not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Uh, but. But that can happen multiple ways, which is why I'm starting this other channel, because this is a, a, a place for this, and that'll be a place for that. Well, you, will somebody's... you be a guest on my show, too? <laughs> sure, oh, I have okay. nothing to say. Yeah. I, I can talk oh, about wax all that. day. I'm no, she talked about, about one of the best parts of our relationship <laughs> is the deep conversations, and it's how our relationship started. That's important. And I was it, intriguing to enough. him that I thought so deep, and yeah. I, you know, provoked deep <laughs> spiritual conversation like just deep life conversation challenges me sometimes <laughs> you know and that's that's the thing but uh, you know Wait, should we tell them the, the story like about the quotes about what the quotes well you can yeah this is she's a tricky person <laughs> mm -hmm. well i felt like i was on this journey with god like this personal journey with god anyway like just learning about buddhist philosophy as a spiritual philosophy not as a religion um and so like and how compared to like how jesus was and Thich Nhat Hanh, who's a buddhist teacher he has a book and it's like living buddha living christ and it's like how they they coincide so much and how he feels and i do too like how jesus and the buddha which his name was siddhartha um would have been like you know great people they would have got along famously because they fought a lot alike so I had this book of Buddhist quotes, you know, and so like God will always be my number one. Like I'm not like, I don't like to. You already said not as religion, but as a philosophy. Yeah. So, so like God will always be my number one. So don't think I'm Buddhist, but um, I do love Buddhist philosophy. Obviously I collect the And if you're Buddhist. a Buddhist, that's cool. No, no I mean, no. and Thich Nhat Hanh will tell you to use Buddhism to be a better whatever you are, whether it's a better Buddhist or a better Christian or... Um, you know, like, as Gandhi would say, like, you know, I like your Christ, I don't like your Christians, like, because they're kind of mean. Struggle, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and so, use it to be a better whatever you are. But, so, I had this book of Buddhist quotes, and I was reading them to him, because I knew which ones coincided with things that Jesus would say. <laughs> yes, she did not tell me that that's no. what she was reading. So, about. we're talking on the phone, you know, and so, I'd be like, what do you think of this quote? And I knew it matched up with the Bible. And so, because I know my Bible really well, I may not be able to tell you exactly where it's at, but I know the stories um, more than even he thinks I do <laughs> until he's like, wow, I'm impressed. But, um, <laughs> but he can quote the Bible verses and stuff. But anyways, um, I don't have a doctorate in biblical theology, but um, so he would be like, I like it. I like it a lot. I probably read you maybe a hundred, like 50 to a hundred of them. And he was like, I like those a lot. Then. Yeah, it's really good stuff. I said, and I remember and then saying, I'm like, it's good stuff. guess where these, these quotes are from. And he's like, where? And I just showed him the book that it was like a Buddhist book. And he, he was kind of like, <sighs> I got very quiet. Yeah. <laughs> like undone and had to think about it. Cause like that rocked his like. <laughs> like mm -hmm. so see how it matches with the bible like i do that thing where i always like compare and like how does this match with what i know the bible says and stuff so i'm able to do that but you know even him even he was kind of like i need to take a minute with this which really is <laughs> just funny it sh well it's funny but it showed the religious the which i consider to be a negative term the religious side of me i, I think that all of what we call religion or faith is a better word 
is more about relationship than it is about you know a, a ritual and stuck in this place or that place uh, and that's what I believe and that's what I teach but but it's I just think that uh, well even in the denominations that you're in they're very oh well, yeah and that's this is I think what Gandhi it, is talking know. about I like your Christian you don't like your well, Christians well and a lot more of course because he personally <laughs> witnessed the persecution of minorities in South Africa and in India and he personally witnessed that coming from people who claimed the name of Christ, which is historically accurate. Would join my channel and you'll learn more. Of those sorry, things. I didn't mean to make it, but, but that's but our I, background. Sorry. I guess you know she she shared that with me. I was a bit taken. Well, I was more than a bit taken back, and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, the, the, what is this? But because I I had studied biblical literature, which by the way is not just studying the Bible, it's studying the literature around Bible times. It's a, it's everything that the was history. available, the history of it. It's fascinating. All of, all of the I details of things, and one of the things I discovered, just as a real quick one, <laughs> is that is that Absolutely. Buddha Buddha who was, you know, about four hundred and sixty between four hundred sixty five hundred years before Christ was saying things, identical things, that Jesus would speak when he was doing ministry at 30 years old. And then we talk Very about the, th the theories behind that. We mm -hmm. love to talk, we, have, we love to have right. conversations like that. Most people are like, yeah, that's not yeah, for me. Yeah. But that's where we thrive. And so that's kind of the bond that we have is just, I mean, who can you sit down and have those conversations with? Mm -hmm. But here I am doing, and even my theology about heaven, well, my, I don't, is it theology? Yeah, Probably. A, my concept, thoughts on, your, my concepts concept on heaven, heaven yeah. mm -hmm. you know, like being the garden, like a return to the garden of Eden, but it's your happy place for each individual person. So maybe for him, it's the baseball field with his dad that passed away from cancer, you know, mm -hmm. field of dreams. For me, it's totally the garden of Eden, 120%. Like I wanted to pet all the, I want like my own African elephant and all this stuff like so that's my heaven you know right by the ocean um and even meditation like i take the buddhist philosophy and he can tell you the scriptures the biblical scriptures where that matches um you know david saying you know meditate on you know things of the lord and blah 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 and, and i just go, it's me and jesus or me and god sitting in beach chairs you know as adirondack beach chairs right at the ocean and every now and then a big old African elephant comes by and you know you pet him but me and Jesus or me and God whoever I whichever the two um I decide that day um well they're ugh, like we could get in the whole spiritual thing but it's not for this but <laughs> I'm just saying like so we're sitting there we're just looking at the ocean and it's just hanging out with God you know so that's she has a and this and this concept that she's developed uh, has been one based on her relationship with God, and so that's why it really intrigued me. And the more that I would study, and nobody, I don't care who they are, how much of a Bible scholar they are, or anything else, can give you a specific description or definition of your eternity. And the reason for that, I believe, uh, you know, and again, this is, a, it's all theory. You have to understand that. that it's all theory. It's not, you know, you can Concepts. look at the book of Revelation, you can see golden streets and, you know, and crystal rivers and all this kind of thing, but that isn't necessarily a description of heaven. So, you know, and I know that bends some people the wrong way, but the facts are the facts. And, uh, you know, and I just think this concept is a great concept. So when I think of Ursula, by the way, I authored a book back and that was published back in 2005. Ursula was a, a manager at a Walden bookstore. She was the per first person to have me come to a bookstore to do signings and so forth. So, I mean, I've known her a long, long time. And, my con and I've got concepts of what Ursula is doing hanging out in heaven based on us knowing her and her family. And, uh, but I think it's that place of ultimate peace and joy that you, you have. So you, you can join, you can follow my channel. You can go to my channel. Once I'm up, we'll let you know all of that, but that can happen. I'll tell you more of that story and, and the book that I read and, and some other books that I read that started to change and started to turn me to pay attention to other details rather than just what the denominational line was, no. rather than just what the... The religious view was and not putting God in like a, a spirit box, like yeah. in a denominational box because each denomination is different I think there's room for all views there like yeah. God God doesn't have to be like 
the exact... It's not a cookie cutter anything yeah. in the Bible. Nowhere. You can start at Genesis and end in Revelation. And by the way, read some of the side books that some... Never mind. Uh, we'll talk about that on the channel. But, uh, you know, there are books that were excluded from the Bible. You might want to know who excluded them and why. It's fascinating. Uh, it's Just pretty fascinating stuff. But there is room. God is so much bigger than anything that we could even imagine. So enough preaching on that. Just wanted to share a little bit about us. There's a lot more to the story. But why we connect? There, like, there's the good, there's, there is some bad, and there's the in-between, and most of this is fantastic, and we're on with life, and, uh, and, and there's still more adventure. To have. I've got to get her on an airplane to go to Africa. At some point in time, I don't know how, we're, how she's going to do that. I was all for the boat idea until Life of out. Pi, and I'm like... I don't yeah, she, watch, she watches <laughs> movies and makes her decisions based on them. So, know. Uh, you know, we've watched enough Harry Potter. Maybe we'll take room six. I don't know how we'll do that, but no, no. Uh, but anyway, it's, a, it's just a fantastic and, story. And, uh, you know, but my old religious views wouldn't allow me to even talk about these kinds my of things. That's how legalistic it was. Like... <laughs> turning and churning, maybe. But Why are you wearing um, a Harry Potter shirt? Like... Yeah, because just those identities could put you in a certain camp. They probably Listen, think I'm going to hell. It's like, just it's that, just... yeah. yeah. Uh, well, anyway, that's another story for the other channel. But anyway, uh, but <laughs> we not... wanted to share this with you. that, that um, Because maybe you're someone who has gone through a lot of stuff in your life and you find yourself in that place of not feeling worthy so i want to say two things to that number one people don't qualify you for worthiness okay you make a decision and god is always there for you that's the one thing and the second thing that i want to say is we are all imperfect but we're still stars we're all there are imperfections do you want to be cosmetically good or do you want to be the real thing? And I'm going to tell you right now, what I love about this company, about Cincy, is how real everyone is. I like, Genuine, I'm telling you, I get simple. so excited about that, uh, how real people are. Some, I've watched some of these videos, you know, and some of these people are just raw, real on, on, on the air. And, and we giggle. And, and <laughs> laugh. And I, and they are, and you, but every one of you that's on YouTube and, uh, and other means that we've watched, uh, you are really important to our life. And I don't know if you realize that. You just really are. And it's so much fun to watch your little, your, your shows and, uh, uh, and, and see your, your response to all this. So I just want to say, you know, I, and I love uh, Orwell and Heidi. I am, I am excited about these next few years with, you know, new leadership and so forth. But, uh, but I've learned a lot we've learned a lot as a couple just watching their uh their videos uh watching their lives and so forth uh you know j it's just just learning about relationship just from watching them which is just just totally wonderful so i don't know if you want to share anything else but i just you know like that's just you know if people are like i wonder whatever makes you <laughs> you know we don't we look at each other like souls like we fell in love with like each other's souls and like there's just like a connection so that's because i was so good looking I know <laughs> obviously <you're> just... like <laughs> obviously <laughs> i'm just saying I'm teasing. <laughs> but, i mean there's always that kind of attraction but i'm saying like no, we absolutely. don't see age. Yeah. Like I think not... that we loved each other first, intellectually and spiritually and dynamically like than anything so many else. Phone that was really, that was really, yeah, it was conversations and, like, uh, and I have a deep appreciation for her and her family background, and I have nothing but respect for her family members that are in ministry. They are good people. They are, they are dedicated, committed people, and and. They're, they're really, really helping people a lot. And her grandfather was one, and her grandmother were two of the people that I really looked up to. And then her grandmother on her birth father's side, uh, what a wonderful soul, what a wonderful lady, uh, tremendous. I'm so glad I, I had the privilege like of getting to, yeah, you do. When she was younger, you look identical to her. And my Aunt Brenda. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope to see so, my Aunt Brenda. Anyway. But yeah, so that's to answer your question. That's like 
We knew each other long before it was like long, 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 years and years right. before we ever thought about. So there was just like a, a friend comfort kind of thing, like family comfort kind of, you know, and then you just realize how much you have in, in, you know, in common with spirituality or in just life, you know, like whether it's, like I said, music, like he can sing, I can't sing, I can kind of tinker on the cello, but like he wrote me a song. <laughs> you know, like I've written a lot of the, songs. That was a good song, though. That's not bad. Yeah, so mm -hmm. like, there's no competition. Like, you can speak all you want to. I don't want to. You know, I'm just rah rah. <laughs> Which is kind of surprising when you think about it. I don't anticipate that my videos will be two and a half hours long, though. But because you're really good at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's already been an hour She's, 20 minutes so. she shares a lot and no i i will have to guard that myself because it tends to go on but i'm going to be doing some music i'm going to be doing some you know playing playing some guitar and doing some other things and we've got some great plans as the holidays come up for this show <laughs> as well that we've been talking about kicking around maybe you know we're gonna join with all of you and have a little sensey Christmas party on the air. And that's all that I'm going <laughs> to say. We, about talk about that? we talked about the guitar. Oh, stuff. Okay. That, to me, I was going to say a party. party. Like, if, I pick up my, if I pick up my guitar, you're cooking and we're going to eat in front of them. Do that. No, no, that wouldn't be <laughs> drink fair. Drink some wine or whatever. No, that wouldn't be fair. To them. So they'd have to be doing the same thing there. They have to be very interactive, totally live. Yeah. But just one more quick thing. Like, so like, for example, like E2M, like, I ha I totally lack self control like for eating if he wants to eat out fancy places I'm like okay because <laughs> I I mean that's fun and I never used to get to do that before like it was always golden corral <laughs> I hate no offense to golden corral <laughs> just sick of golden corral <clears throat> but he would want to go to all these fun places so like you know you blow up and then you come back down you blow up you come back down. <laughs> So like with E2, I'm like, okay, I need you to help me do this because I will never stick to it. You know, I'll have spent all this money and I won't have lost any weight. So he was all in. He was like, okay, you know, like I'll cook the food. And he now he's kind of a little more attached to it than I am. Not that I'm not because I still have like another 20 pounds I want to lose. But um, he only wants to lose like 10. It's or whatever, great but, food too. It's just a great lifestyle. But he joined the gym when I joined the gym. Like that's just who Dale is. And that's just like... I love that. Like, I want a partner. I don't want like someone I bow to. Or, like, a little bowing is someone so I'm competing with constantly <laughs> because they don't respect, you know, who I am or what I well, do. Well, and that's like, a great word. That's a great word. I completely. Melissa brings so much to the table, not just what you're seeing, you know, but she brings so much to the table in her in her thinking, the things she says, and in her knowledge. She's got some medical training. I don't have any medical training. Just an experience with a very very sick wife that was dying, and you're very you good know, at lupus. And I have that. What's that? You're very experienced with lupus. Yeah, very experienced with one thing. You know that that I just do not have any experience with. Uh, she has some medical training and terminology and so forth, and so, you know. Why we, I like skulls and sugar skulls. And she just likes that stuff. She was great in, Mr. in her anatomy classes and so forth. I love forth. anatomy. But, um, but for me, no, it's a completely, it's all, you know, biblical theology, counseling, that kind of stuff. That's where I come from. And music. Music has been the thing that has dominated my I'm life. Not good with that. So we'll talk about that stuff on but the But I can kind of keep up with you with the Bible. Yeah, you can. You're, you're very, very good at that. So, but I wrote and published songs, and and uh, you know people sing them in different parts of the world, and that's nice. That's really I can rattle off the Old Testament. You, know. you can. You can rattle <laughs> off the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. This is exercise. And better than that, that rattling off the New Testament is even better. So yeah, anyway. All right. It's just fun. That's all that I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, that's it, you guys. Like, um, so hopefully that picture. answers your questions. And um, that's us. That's that's how we got together. That's why we're together. That's why we work so well together. And um, I know y'all think he's like super like supportive and. So, um, yeah, sometimes I'm not as much as I need to be. I mean, it's the reality. He's I guess, pretty you know. supportive. And I, I I guess the th we're not rich. I'm happy for those of you that are. <laughs> Someday, maybe. <laughs> Not yet. One day. I can't, but, I'm just having trouble keeping up with my club, let alone. But we are. <laughs> but but that's really not even the issue for us. It's not really. It's not about possessions and things and stuff. It's about the the richer things of life, and that's having friends like them. you and having friends like each other, and we walk together in this life, and and having the kids, all all the kids, you know, just a real blessing, a tremendous blessing, but. 
I'll tell more of my story my first on the first show. I'll be telling you know the very very specific backgrounds of things that to just kind of help get you to get to know me or whoever's watching you to know me. So, all right, that's all I have. That's you have anything it. else? No. Are you sure? Right. There's still another. And stay tuned because I'll have that video of like the Harry Potter festival and the, the race oh, and all so that stuff. Oh, it's so good. You're going to love this video. I love the music in this video. Yeah. Uh, iMovie and... has free music, but. Yeah, she's turned <laughs> into quite a good producer. I really, that's going to be. I should cut good. like us getting up and moving and I'm just like, you know what? It's life. Here we go. <laughs> Here's an hour or so to three hours to hang yeah, out and listen. That's good because you don't really you don't like fluff it all up. Here's here it is. This is what's real, you know, and I like that. That's important. So sorry we yeah. ramble and go off on creature bunny trails. Oh, I'm sorry, he teases me. Like, it takes forever to let me smell you the You know that she's like the bunny trail queen. So and she always says, "Oh, I was in the bunny trail." So so at least we're honest about, about it. About sensey, I well, am I in me? Yeah. <laughs> It's all... little story story time as lisa Burberry would say story time with melissa <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think some of you really love to watch this because she's just real and that's hopefully I that's what you'll life. find in yourselves as well just be real be real all right guys enjoy your sunday um i'll attach to this as well like the different colored oh the different colored bulbs i'll try to include green and orange because they're coming tomorrow so Plus, I'll do a whole other video tomorrow of my monthly club, <laughs> which changes all the time. It's always different. So stay tuned. Um, and at the end of even the colored bulbs, enjoy the Harry Potter Festival and Kent, Ohio and Kent University. And it's amazing. I don't know if you mentioned it. Cassie almost went to Kent State. She did. <laughs> had her major there, but the scholarship wasn't as much of an offer as the University of Maine. Yeah, so. it was between Kent State because it was closer and they had zoology and University of Maine and the University of Maine won because they gave her the Black Bear Scholarship, which is bigger than Kent gave her, Kent mm -hmm. State. So, um, off to 14, 15 hour trips to Maine twice a year. Packing a cool. car full. Yeah. <laughs> you can you see out the back? Nothing and, better the kids than going all... to Maine. <laughs> Squish in the we car. Love, we love Maine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. We've yeah. had a lot of fun. Like, he's Sagittarius, which I know my family's like, what? They're probably passed out now. <laughs> oh. But, like, he's Sagittarius. He likes adventure. I'm Libra, and which I think is Hufflepuff to you, just and fair. <laughs> Fair and just, or whatever that is. So, yeah, he's Mr. Adventure. So we've we've done a lot of travel, and we went to Disney with the kids, and all kinds of fun stuff together. Made lots of trips to Maine. Just in case you're passing out about that <laughs> fact, I always direct people that the wise men knew which star to follow. It's, it's fascinating. This is why we have lots of fun you conversations. Just gotta know we need to hear that. about Daniel. <laughs> And, and, like CIU and, is on this and furthermore, the Bible says that Jesus was born at the exact right moment in time. So, and I've always said, I even the horoscopes in the, yeah, I, I just so. think that um, God had his in even my name, Melissa I means honeybee. Like I've always felt like um, I was, you know, God impressed upon my parents, you know, my name, and it matches with my Greek meaning of my name because. That's what God wanted it to be, and meek and mild or whatever. And, um, like, I I've always said, like, even your birth date, like, and the reason why they can track all that stuff is because God wanted you born on that day because he wanted For those reason, qualities about you. A specific reason. Just my theory. Uh, very important. <laughs> and I know, Concept. I mean, my name, Dale, it means, like, valley. It's like there's the hill and the dale, okay? The dale is that valley area where there's community and relationship and all that if you study that you, you find that out a little bit more so i think that's you see she's distracted by that stuff i'm not but that's okay. the dog is old and sick and, and but probably has congestive days, heart failure but the kids are. would be mad at me if like she didn't look like she's dying before I... no she's she's not suffering she she's, still runs yeah, into she stuff runs like She's blind, so she runs into things. But anyways, we're on another bunny trail. Yeah, so, I blame yeah. you. <laughs> and I blame you. So <laughs> and we share it equally. <laughs> so anyway, just want to encourage you. Thank you so much for watching us. And is it time yet? Yep, it's time. Bye, okay. guys. Oh, yeah. 
Stay, like, subscribe See. helps us if you like, and then subscribe if, if you enjoy and, you know, turn on your notifications, all that stuff. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Like, Dale will be like, okay, I gotta like, I think, I'll be, starting, or something. I think I'll be starting Thursday. So yeah. and he's mm -hmm. working on that. I keep encouraging him because he's like, eh. <laughs> I'm like, no, you should. I'm, I've been on TV internationally and I'm nervous to do <laughs> YouTube. So, okay. That's how it is. Bye guys. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. Peace. Hi guys. Melissa Johnson, independent Sensi consultant and... Here is my night sky warmer. And I promised you that when my um, monthly club arrived and I got the green and the orange bulbs, that I would attach this video to it so that you could see. So this is the clear bulb. Gorgeous. So now it would help I turn it off, right? <laughs> this is getting excited. Now we're gonna do orange. I think the colors are so much fun. Orange would be great at Halloween. Um, like the star, like even purple. Purple would be amazing at Halloween. Purple and orange. <gasps> if you got two of these and had one in purple and one in orange, oh my word, for Halloween. <gasps> Spectacular. <laughs> I love Halloween. It's like right by my birthday. Plus I love candy. <laughs> So, what's not to love about Halloween with candy and pumpkins? I love pumpkins. <laughs> so, let's check out this orange warmer, or this orange bulb in this warmer. And I apologize, I don't want to pull this plug out of the wall, but look at the orange, you guys. That's spectacular. Spectacular. Look at that. That is fantastic for decorating for Halloween. I love this warmer on its own. I love it with the colored bulbs. Orange is spectacular. Think Halloween decorations with your pumpkins. Um, I have the pumpkin spice cup warmer, um, you know, from last, I think it was clearance that I got that. I am so excited. So I'm super excited. I can put colored bulbs in this and decorate with this. I think this is staying downstairs. <laughs> So next we're going to do the green, and with the green, think St. Patrick's Day, Christmas. Um, I just think this warmer is so much fun. You have so many options for decorating. Like, I love white. My Christmas tree ends up being like all white um, bulbs and stuff. So I love, and I love to do like, um, white, so like a white tree, um, like white decorations and so it would be so much fun to have this pop of color with all of my white because when it's off it still matches all my Christmas decor so there's green and that like I said that's great for St. Patrick's Day <gasps> love it so much so much so do the stars themselves I don't know the stars and they, and they come off I don't know, but that's spectacular. You guys, look at those like colored bulbs. Amazing. St. Patrick's Day, Christmas. Hello. <laughs> so hopefully that's helpful to see all of those. Um, go vote on Bring Back My Bar. Go get the Aladdin. If you want the buddy, go grab the genie buddy. Um, and go grab the wax bar, the Three Wishes wax bar that's like blueberry and something else I some other <laughs> raspberry blueberry I don't remember what else but go grab those um and we'll see you soon and remember at the end of this video will be my Harry Potter festival um wizarding world of Kent so stay tuned